Welcome back. Uh, in section 3.2, we're going to continue our discussion on differentiation rules and talk about two useful rules, uh, the product rule and the quotient rule. Uh, in 3.1, though, let me just mention, I think most people would agree the, the most useful rule we looked at was the power rule. And remember, the power rule can be used for radicals if you change the radicals to rational exponents first. N can be any real number. Anyway, the first rule I want to talk about today is the product rule. It talks about how to differentiate the product of two functions. Uh, it, what it says is when you differentiate a product, and we'll, we'll prove this in class, it's not the product of the derivatives. In fact, it's the first function times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first. And you can actually look at this in either order because you're adding. So let's look at an example of what that says. For this first function, to differentiate this using the product rule, um, the first function stays the same. You multiply by the derivative of the second, so it would be x squared minus 5 times 2, plus the derivative of the first, which becomes 2x, and keep the second function the same. Then when you simplify this, when you multiply everything out, and when you combine like terms, you get 6x squared minus 2x minus 10. It turns out um, you could have just taken this function and multiply it out at first and then use the power rule, couldn't you? And that would maybe that would be easier. If you take this function and multiply it out, you get this, and then when you differentiate each term using the power rule, you get that. So it's the same answer. So that, that, that shows there might be more than one way to look at some of these problems. Look at this next one. Um, here, you, you, you can look at it as the product of two functions. And so we'd use the product rule. Uh, the first function would be the quantity 2e to the x. And the second function would be x to the 1 half. So what does the product rule say? The product rule says the derivative of this product was the first function times the derivative of the second. And of course the derivative of the second would be 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Plus the, first function, uh, plus the derivative of the first function. And of course the derivative of 2e to the x is 2e to the x times the second function, which is x to the 1 half. Now when you simplify this, you move the exponent down to the bottom and you get your common denominator. Notice when you multiply top and bottom by x to the 1 half, this becomes an x on the top. So that, that's, that's why you get your final answer, e to the x plus 2x e to the x over x to the 1 half. Let's do another one. Look at this one. On this one, we have to decide, should we multiply this out or should we just apply the product rule at this stage. Uh, you could do it either way. Um, I'm just going to get in there and use the product rule, which says that it be the first function times the derivative of the second, which gives me 1 plus 3 e to the w, plus the derivative of the first, which becomes 1 half w to the negative 1 half, and keep the second function fixed. So now comes the fun part. When you simplify this, we're going to move the negative exponent down and then we have to get the common denominator. We're going to multiply this, this one on top and bottom by 2w to the 1 half, which is going to give me a, um, isn't it going to give me a 2w on the top? See that? So now, uh, at this point, I'm going to multiply the top out and carefully combine like terms. And your final answer is going to be 3w plus 6w e to the w plus 3e to the w all over 2w to the 1 half. Okay. I'm going to talk about the other differentiation rule that we're going to discuss in this section, and that's called the quotient rule. It talks about how to differentiate a quotient. It's kind of complicated, and the order is really important here. You get the derivative of a quotient becomes the bottom function times the derivative of the top minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom all over the square of the bottom function. The order is really important. It always starts off as the bottom times the derivative of the top. Remember that. All right, so when you have a problem like this, if you wanted to differentiate this, this, this function here, you could apply the quotient rule. Uh, the derivative becomes the bottom function times the derivative of the top, which that gives you negative 2x, 
minus, don't forget the minus sign, the top function times the derivative of the bottom, which gives you a positive 2x, and notice you're squaring the bottom function. So then you multiply the top out carefully, and you end up with negative 2x minus 2x to the third minus 2x plus 2x to the third all over 1 plus x squared squared. I believe that 2x to the thirds cancel and that's why your final answer is negative 4x over 1 plus x squared squared. Alright, let's, let's do some more here. This one, these last two are kind of hard. This one again you have to decide on, on your approach here. Uh, there's different ways to look at it. The first way, I'm going to use the power rule here, and then what I'm going to do, by the way, I think that's good advice, look for the power rule. I'm going to take the numerator and, and divide each term by, t, by the square root of t. When you, when you do that, you subtract the exponents, right? So it becomes t to the 3 halves minus 1 half, that's why I got t, plus t divided by t to the 1 half, that's why I get 2 to the 1 half. So I'm just simplifying it. Now you can think about it as you can apply the power rule and the derivative becomes 1 plus 1 half t to the negative 1 half. When you move the exponent down and get the common denominator you multiply top and bottom by 2 t to the 1 half here. That's why you get that final answer. However there are other ways of looking at it as well. I bet some people would probably prefer to try the quotient rule because it does look like a quotient. Anyway, if you, if you did that it would work, you just have to be careful here. The derivative would become the bottom function, which we're going to call t to the one half, times the derivative of the top, which we get three halves t to the one half plus one, minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom. And Notice the derivative of the bottom is one half t to the negative one half. And you divide by the square of square root of t, which is just t. Now when you multiply this out carefully, look at what happens. t to the 1 half times 3 halves t to the 1 half. When you add the exponents, don't you just get t to the 1? That's why you get 3 halves t to the 1. So you would continue that carefully multiplying the numerator out and you get 3 halves t plus t to the 1 half minus 1 half t minus 1 half t to the 1 half all over t. So then when you um, combine like terms, you get t plus one half t to the one half over t. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the common denominator on the numerator, which is two, and I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of t. So that's how I get this. When you multiply straight across, you get this, and then I think I can cancel a t to the one half from every term on the top and bottom. So my final answer is the same, but that was a little bit more work. You could even use the product rule on this. If you go back to this first problem, couldn't you move the x, couldn't you move the square root of t on the bottom up to the top and call it t to the negative one half? And that's what I did. If you use the product rule on this, it's kind of a mess, but you could do it. It's the first times the derivative of the second. The derivative of the second is three halves t to the one half plus one, plus the derivative of the first, which is one half t to the negative three halves times the second. When you carefully multiply this out, again, look at what happens here with the exponents. t to the one half times three halves t to the I'm sorry, t to the negative one half times three halves t to the positive one half, you end up with three halves t to the zero. Well folks, t to the zero is just one, so that's how I got the three halves there. Anyway, if you if you continue, you would get three halves plus t to the negative one half minus one half minus one half t to the negative one half. And then you would combine like terms, move the exponent down to the bottom and get the common denominator. You see the algebra can get rather intense, but don't worry. You do the homework, you'll be fine. Last one. Uh, this last problem illustrates that sometimes it's nice to simplify before you differentiate. If you simplify the denominator, you get the LCD and you get x squared minus 5 over x, and then you flip this over and multiply. The, the function can be written as x to the third over x squared minus 5. So when you use the quotient rule now, you end up with the bottom times the derivative of the top, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, all over the bottom squared, you multiply the top out, combine like terms, and you get your final answer should be x to the fourth minus 15x squared all over x squared minus 5 squared. I think that just about wraps it up for today. We'll see you in class. Bye bye.